the other lesson we were looking at the surface surface area and volume of a regular tetrahedron and this lesson is going to focus on a regular square pyramid or just a square pyramid because a square itself is a regular polygon so this screen we've seen before when we were looking at the tetrahedron it says that a right pyramid is a three-dimensional object that has um, triangular faces and a base that's a polygon and in particular the square pyramid has um, a right quadrilateral, which is our square. So I'm just going to recap a few things that we looked at before. We have the apex of our pyramid is very top. The height is a perpendicular from the apex to the center of the base. Right, so the center, the middle of our base. The slant height is the height of a triangular face. All right, so those are things that we need to remember. Height and slant height are different, and they're going to change our problem. The surface area of a right pyramid is the sum of the areas of the triangular faces and the base. The lateral area does not include the base. So this is where it's different. This is a square pyramid. This is the net of the square pyramid. If I want to find the surface area, I want to look at where the base is. All right, and what do I have for a base? If this is a square pyramid, my base is a square. So I have to have the surface area of the base. So there is the surface area of the square. Now these triangles that we have, well, they're all the same shape. So these four are exactly the same. So all I need to do is calculate the area of one of these triangles and then multiply it by four. And then I have all of them. So this is where this four is coming from. We're going to multiply by four. And this is the surface area of the triangular face. So we can see that from our net. So that's where we're getting maybe our formula for our square pyramid. So let's look at this question. It says, find the surface area of the right square pyramid. And in this case, I am given the slant height. All right, so the height is given. So I'll mark that in red. Here is our slant height. Because the slant height is going to give us the surface area of this triangular face, which is what we're looking for. So let's look at our surface area. So surface area, we said, was going to equal the area of the base plus four times the area of the face. From our net. OK, so area of my base, I have a square. So I'm going to do that in blue. So you can see here is my base in blue. So the area of my base is 8 squared, 8 times 8, plus 4 times the area of the face. And the area of the face is the rectangle, and that's the red. And so that is going to be 1 half the base, which is 8, and the slant height, the height of the triangle, which is 10. So let's do the math. So we have 8 squared is 64. And we have 16 times 10, which is 160. So one, two, sorry, um, 224. And when we are looking at our surface area, area is squared units. And because I don't, oh, I do, I have centimeters. So let's look at that. I have the units. So this is going to say that I have 224 centimeters squared. So there's how I found my surface area. So surface area of a square pyramid is going to require a slant height because we need that height for that triangular face. But we're not always given the slant height. What if we're given the height, the perpendicular height? I know that the overall height of this pyramid is 10. And I don't have units here, so when I stick some units in, um, we'll just use centimeters. I'll just stick some centimeters in there. So looks kind of the same as our last one, but it's not. And that's because of this perpendicular height. Now, what we need is a slant height. Now, if you can see, this is in the inside 
of our square or of our pyramid. I want the one that goes on the outside and this measure in. I need to see in order to get the slant height, I have a triangle. So 10 that I have is right here. This is the 10. Because of our geometry, we know that this side and this side are equal. This is my midpoint. So if this total amount is 8, this side here is 4. Um, that also tells me, because I'm inside here, that this side here is 4. And so what I need to find is this hypotenuse right here. So remember, my right triangle is in here. I've got 4 and I've got 10. Those are my legs. So the first thing I need to do is find the slant height. So we find the slant height. And we find the slant height using the Pythagorean theorem. So I don't know. I'm going to call this S for slant height. And in order to do that, I know that I'm using the Pythagorean theorem, the square of the two sides, the sums of the squares of the two sides. And I take the square root of that to get the hypotenuse. We will round to one decimal place. When you're dealing with this in science, they tend to be picky about using significant digits, accuracy and precision with number and measurements. And they like to slap our fingers because we don't do that that well in math. But we'll just go to one decimal place. One unit past what you usually round to or what the units are given in a question is our rule of thumb. So this gives me 10.8. So that says that what I have marked here in red, my slant height, that this is 10.8. All right, so now that I have that information, okay, what we want to do is now find the surface area. Oops, I moved something I didn't need to move. Sorry about that. So there's how we found the slant height. What we want to do now is we need to find our surface area. So our surface area, remember that's equal to the surface area of the base plus four times the surface area of the face. So this is where I'm getting my information. This is the net. So to get the surface area, the surface area of my base, well, that's going to give me 8 squared. 8 times 8 because it's a square base, plus 4 times 1 half the base of the triangle, which is an 8. The height of the triangle sides, that's my slant height, of 10.8. So this gives me 64 plus 172.8. For a total of 236.8 square units. My units are centimeters, so I have centimeters squared. So here is a question where we have to find the surface area two different ways. If I'm given the slant height, it's very direct. If I'm given the perpendicular height, I have to find the slant height. And then I have the rest of the question to do. So you have to be careful about the information that's given. So that's surface area. The next we want to look at is volume. Volume is very straightforward. And I notice again I have no units. So let's put in inches for this, for this one. Volume, we have this formula is for any pyramid. We have a square. And a square or a rectangle, because we're going to use a rectangle the next time, length times width. In a square, we tend to say side squared, but that's length and width. They're the same unit, right? So specifically, when we're looking at a rectangular pyramid or a square pyramid, we can use this formula, one-third the length times the width times the height. 
Now this height that we have, this is our perpendicular height. It's the overall height of the pyramid. So we need to know that. All right, so let's look at this question. Make sure I have enough room. I'm just going to make formulas a little smaller. We'll move them off to the side. Oops. I didn't lock my features, so I moved this one too far to the side. All right. So here's our formula. One third length times width times height. Six inches. This is also six inches, right? Remember, we have a square. So volume is equal to one third six times six times nine. So the volume, when we work this out, we get 108 cubic units. So in this case, it's cubic inches because volume has three things that you multiply together. And when you do that, that's what you get is a cube. This is three-dimensional. Three-dimensional has a power of three. Very straightforward to do when you have the perpendicular height. Well, let's recap. Surface area requires slant height. Volume requires perpendicular height. So if I wasn't given perpendicular height, like in this question, and I have slant height, I have to find the perpendicular height. So how do I find the perpendicular height? Here I have the hypotenuse. There's my perpendicular, and this is where my right angle is formed, right here. Right, so we're looking at this blue triangle first. Four inches is the, the side length of my square, so that means that this measure is a two. And this is the one I'm looking for, and we'll mark it with an H. So we use the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is going to tell us that six squared is equal to H squared plus two squared. So we're going to rearrange our equation to solve for h squared. So we have 36 minus 4 is equal to h squared. The square root of 36 minus 4 is equal to h. So we're looking at the square root of 32 is our height. And if I round that, right, that's, um, had that there, that's 5.7. I think it was like 5.66, so we'll just round to 5.7 as our height. So our perpendicular height we'll put as 5.7 inches. Now remember we're dealing volume. Volume is one third length times width times height. Well, length and width are both four. My height I just found is 5.7. So what I get from my volume is 30.4 cubic units. Oh, and these units are in inches. So this would be 30.4 cubic inches is the volume of this pyramid. So what we've seen is surface area and volume of a square pyramid. If I have surface area, I need slant height. So if that's given, it's straightforward. If the perpendicular height is given, I have to find the slant height using the Pythagorean theorem. For volume, perpendicular height is needed. If I'm given the slant height, I have to find the perpendicular height using the Pythagorean theorem. But remember that the slant height that would be given in a volume question is the hypotenuse. So there's a few questions for you to try. They'll be given to you by your teacher. Thank you for listening.